Let's get dangerous. Hello and welcome to Attack of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me is my fellow host, Susie. Hey, how you doing, folks? And on this special interview, we got a special guest co-host from the forums. His name is Brandon, also known as the Hardcore Kid. Woo! Yo! <laughs> you guys ready for nice our... Nice to be here. All right, sweet. Are uh, you guys ready for our uh, guest that we're about to interview here? We are indeed. Yes. We are. Uh, our second guest is one of the big three female reviewers from Back Out of the Glasses. She's known for her anime news editorial. She's known for her awesome singing. The one and only Mars Girl. Woo! Hi. Yay! Hey, <laughs> hey Marsy. <laughs> we got some questions, and Brandon, would you like to start the questions? I would be glad to. All right. Um, where do I start? Um, I guess we'll start with some questions by the movie brat. Yes? Yeah. No? Maybe? Maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and, uh... The movie Brat from our from the forums. Uh, first question is, what is your opinion on the Highlander films? If you've seen them. Uh, yeah, I've seen them, and uh, of course Highlander, awesome. And then it just kind of got progressively weird. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know what else uh, further I can say about that, but uh, I think most people who have seen them would agree. <laughs> That's funny because my high school football team is called the Highlanders. And, um, nice. <laughs> it's pretty much. <laughs> Do they get progressively yeah. weird too over the course of the year? <laughs> oh, you betcha. <laughs> I'm glad I got out there when I did. I'm in college now. Oh, dear. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Mike, I believe you're next. Yeah, I know. Uh, the next question is. Uh, any Godzilla films you like, and why? What's your favorite Godzilla film? Well, actually, recently I've been starting watching the uh, Godzilla movies um, from first release, first order. I've, I've been doing them in order of release. So, um, and then there's a few that I took out of order. There was one that I saw, gosh, I, and I'm suddenly not remembering what, what it is. Godzilla Returns, or whatever, like, the very second one was, um, and, uh, what's the name of the actor who plays Sulu in Star Trek, what's his name? Um, uh, George Takei. Suddenly not, George Takei, yeah, he's not actually credited in it, but he voice acts a whole bunch of extra characters in it, and, uh, I recall there was at one point a, uh, an interview that he did, which explained this one line about uh, where this character was calling somebody stupid or something, and because they wanted to match lip flaps, they couldn't figure out what would actually fit lip flaps best, and so they were like, huh, banana oil. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> banana oil. <laughs> So, for, for reasons like that, like the older ones are just so ridiculous, and they got hacked in the tiny pieces or released to the U.S., those are like the cheesiest ones, and the cheesiest ones I find the most fun. <laughs> cool. That and they whoa, can't whoa, pronounce Godzilla. the city uh, Hokkaido. <laughs> they, yeah. they like to say Hokkaido rather than Hokkaido, so those Ooh. are some of my favorites. <laughs> awesome. well, everybody has trouble pronouncing words. I have trouble pronouncing words all the time. <laughs> Uh, Don't we all? Right, I've got a couple of questions for you, yeah. um, Mars Girl. The first is, who would your ideal cast for an English redub of Sailor Moon be? Ideal cast, gosh. I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. So long as it isn't somebody they just pulled off the street, so long as it isn't somebody they grabbed from the 
the old geek dub. And so <laughs> long as the translation is written well, yeah. I really don't care so long as they can just do their job. Exactly. That's all we can ask of them. And uh, what are your favorite Miyazaki films? Of Howl's Moving Castle, um, Laputa Castle in the Sky. Mm -hmm. Man, notice you're, we're seeing a lot of like flying castle scenes here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say those are my two favorites there. And and actually, you know, things like Princess Mononoke and, um, I mean, for some reason, that one was so critically acclaimed, and yet it's just, it's not my favorite. I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. It's just not a favorite of mine. No. I don't know. Can't explain it. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, is there any recent anime you've been watching recently? I've been watching The World Only God Knows, uh, which I haven't quite finished yet, uh, about halfway through it at this point. I should really finish it up because it's only 12 episodes, but it really only just recently finished its run. And I'm finding I really am enjoying it despite the fact that, like, it takes place in high school. It's about a guy who likes dating sims. And you'd think there'd be, like, this metric ton of fan service in it. And surprisingly, there isn't. And so it's making me really, really happy. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been actually pretty pleasantly pleased with it. All righty then. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, what is your... What is the giggle monster got you guys? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh a lot. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question. What is your opinion on Ma Magic Knight Ray Earth? I adore Magic Knight Ray Earth. That was like, that was probably the first clamp story that I ever got introduced to. Uh, I collected both Magic Knight Ray Earth and Magic Knight Ray Earth 2 in their manga box sets. And uh, it, it's, it's just absolutely one of my favorites. And uh, I love that it also involves Mecca, to a certain extent. Uh, it's not the forefront of the series, but I, I really enjoyed it. I thought the English dub was pretty good for being as old as it is, and uh, I, I really liked the English adaptation of the, the intro theme song for the original series, too. I really wish that more series these days would do that, and I think Funimation's starting to do that more and more frequently, you know, translate the intro theme songs again, because there's like this long span of time where they didn't. But uh, yeah, I, I adore Magic Knight Ray Earth, and I, I love older Clamp titles too. Awesome. Cool. And uh, what's your favorite Don Bluth movie, and why? Ah, oh, favorite Don Bluth movie. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I guess Land Before Time. That was one of the first ones I yeah. got introduced oh, to. Yeah. That's a classic. Yeah, that's, it's hard to argue with that one because it was like this combination effort with uh, with Amblin Entertainment. It was just really, really well produced. In, in fact, I was considering at one point doing a uh, sort of retrospective of the Land Before Time series and kind of watching it like spin out and burn out in the, <laughs> the terrifying nosedive that it's gone into. Yeah. So John yeah. had nothing to do with the Anymore. On the forums, there was actually um, me and a bunch of other uh, users actually made our own retrospective of uh, the review series. Like, I did part three, Donnie did part two, Diamanda Hagen did part eight. So, it, it's really, oh, it's really funny. It really yeah. That's awesome. And, I'd and, like and it's like, it that. really shows how it's Yeah, there, there's like a page <laughs> of it on the forums. You can check them all out. I'll be looking for that. Cool. <laughs> Would an anime based on RoboCop or Godzilla or A Nightmare on Elm Street work? Uh, I, I kind of want to say no because um, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar, but I, I've seen little bits and pieces of this recent Iron Man anime that's come out, and I don't know, man. That's that really hasn't looked like it's been very good. Um, so I'm thinking a, a lot of things that are, like, based on American superheroes like Iron Man, 
have kind of, it just doesn't quite fit when put in anime, because they like tried to take Tony Stark and then put him in Japan and try and make him fit in there. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious how this new Wolverine that they're going to do, um, I think Madhouse is the one animating it. Um, that Wolverine looks like it's going to be quite awful, quite honestly. <laughs> if, um, if they did like an animated Godzilla or something, I mean, he belongs there. He belongs in Japan, so I think they could do that right. But I don't know about RoboCop, man. No. I, I just don't know. No, no. <laughs> All right. Or Nightmare on Elm Street. Could you, ima could you imagine or Freddy Krueger as this weird, weird guy with a claw and these bizarre, this bizarre... I'm concerned, like, uh, I'm concerned he would be... So what I'm seeing in this Wolverine thing, because Wolverine in this in this Madhouse anime looks really shown and really pretty boy. And <laughs> can you imagine, like, Freddy looking, like, really pretty and, and coming at you and... Um, saying some sexy phrase before he slices you to ribbons, that would be so dumb. It would take the it would have to take the right studio to do it, but uh, yeah. unfortunately I don't think the right studio would get a hold of it. Yeah. I would would you consider doing a review with various channel awesome members such as Paw on the on M Night's last M airbender? Yeah, I would definitely do something like that. Uh, it would just take, you know, I guess either one of us approaching one another and saying, hey, let's do this. Because that's about all of our reviews, uh, our crossover reviews amount to. One of us decides, you know what, I'm just going to say, hey, let's review this thing. And uh, I guess I'm pretty bad about approaching other people. Have you seen the cartoon show on Nickelodeon? Uh, that's kind of what, it, what it's barely. based on. Uh, very, very little of it, honestly. I, I'm not really the person to go to about it. <laughs> uh, well, you, you're talking about you're talking about Avatar, the the animated series, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've seen like the first season. Yeah. But um, I've seen the first book, and I know I've got like four other books to go through. So um, I, and really the movie. It was pretty much the first book, so I think that, that I could be at least decently knowledgeable about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's fine. Everybody has uh, things they know about, things they don't know about. And I, I've never even watched yeah. a cartoon show, so I wouldn't know it either. Exactly. <laughs> no, that was really about it. I know the basics, and that's all there is to it. Season one, that's all, that's all the knowledge I have. That's fun. Uh, what, any opinions on uh, any of the other works by Clamp, such as Card ca Card ca Card Caper Sakura or Triple X Solid? Um, I do own uh, quite a lot of the Card Capture Sakura manga. Uh, I didn't watch very much of it because, you know, as it was broadcasting on TV, it was it was pretty badly butchered at the time. Um, it, it wasn't it wasn't atrocious or anything, but I didn't appreciate that it was as different as it was. Uh, but I do like it in its original format. It's just hard to find the anime in itself in its original format. I really followed Chobits really far. Uh, I really like Chobits. I did collect the entire anime and the entirety of the manga. Um, I've seen a little bit of Triple X Holic, and I do own some Triple X Holic, the manga. Uh, also, um, had a little bit of Legal Drug and Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles and um, X, both the movie and the animated series and the manga, uh, uh, Tokyo Babylon. And it, it's just cool because Clamp, like, crosses their own work over a ton, although I think they've kind of gone too far with it in recent years, and it's, it's just kind of crazy. But occasionally in the older stuff, like with, uh, Angelic Lair, you'd see characters from that series, like, cameo really, really briefly in Chobits, and you'd be like, hey, I know who that person is, and it's like the cameo is there to make you, just you, feel special. So that's what I thought was kind of cool about, about the older Clamp titles. Awesome. Right. Uh, do you have any favorite anime U.S. distribution companies? Currently, 
probably Funimation. I think Funimation has probably done the best job within recent years. Um, it used to be like this kind of this fight between ADV and Funimation, but ADV was like picking up every single anime regardless of whether it was crap or not. <laughs> and honestly, it was over flooding the market, so I can kind of see why they've like broken up into a bunch of tiny little pieces and scattered across everywhere. Yeah. So Funimation, they pick up good anime. I, I would dare say that the stuff they own is good. And um, that I like their translations. I like their dubs. I like that they have so much available for free and streaming on their website and on YouTube and such. Uh, I just think they're doing a real good job these days. And again, like I mentioned before, um, they've started translating the uh, opening sequences to anime titles. So there's an English version and a Japanese version of the opening sequence. I think that's really cool and really fun. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> uh, how did you get introduced to Jim Cummings? Uh, I was probably was probably first really interested through Darkwing Duck, and then as a kid, I, I just had an ear for things like that voice sounds the same as that voice. So I connected him <laughs> with like Pete from Goof Troop, and then later on in life, I was realizing I am hearing this voice everywhere. I'm like. Is, is he bonkers as well? Is he also Winnie the Pooh? What's going on here? And so I look at my later and I'm like, this man's resume is like 10 miles long. This guy is absolutely amazing. And so, yeah, and now he's my, my favorite uh, voice actor, and I'm pretty sure it, I can say that it's thanks to Darkwing Duck, because I can say without a doubt that was my favorite Disney afternoon TV series. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, he's, he's, he's one of my favorite voice actors as well. And the thing is, uh, about, like, uh, these um, these uh, Western animated voice actors, I don't even, I'm not exactly sure if everyone gives them a whole lot of credit. I mean, like, with Tom Kenny and Tara Strong, they, they have, like, a ton, a tons upon ton, tons of voice acting roles. And some people actually don't um, acknowledge them. They're, they're always, like, interested in the characters, but not the voices behind the characters. Yeah. It's, it's really like, depressing, like that. you know, because, um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I, there's this bit of lag between you and me, so, <laughs> but um, I guess I'll go ahead sorry. and continue. Um, it's, uh, it's really depressing because Hollywood is so hell-bent on, um, if they do an animated feature, they're hell-bent on having Hollywood actors fulfill these voice acting roles when you can tell that these Hollywood actors are, are definitely not, like, voice, vocal, vo voice acting trained. Take, like, the Astro Boy movie that came out this past year, for example. Who really wants to listen to yeah. Nicolas Cage? He was, like, the worst character in that movie, despite the fact that he's this huge Hollywood actor. I thought Astro sounded awful. And yet, here's people, like... Like Jim Cummings for one, and oh, I'm suddenly forgetting the voice actor's name, but it's basically the guy who voice acts is uh, Buster Bunny and um, and Yakko from Animaniacs. Well, somebody out there is going to remember his name and call me a complete idiot. But um, and he gets into all these roles, and I notice his voice everywhere. I'm like these guys are trained vocal professionals. These are the guys we should be getting into animated movies, not Hollywood actors who don't know what they're doing behind the microphone. So that, that's one of the things that upsets me, and that they just don't get a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, do you have any least favorite voice actors on that subject? <laughs> least, least favorite? Um, I guess this, this is really more in the course of video games, I suppose, because most people in um, American television animation, I don't find I necessarily hate. But, um, like, the girl who did the voice of Yuna in Final Fantasy X and X-2, and the girl who did the voice of Aerith in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, I thought were both terrible, <laughs> terrible actresses who should never have been put behind a microphone. And I don't even remember either one of their names, because I don't bother to learn the names of people whose voices I don't like, like I'm sorry to say. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, those are my two. Okay. Uh, 
What's your opinion on uh, Detective Cohen versus Lupin the Third? Oh, I've not seen that. I really, really want to. I, I'm, I'm so excited about seeing it, and I haven't seen it yet. I got so excited when I heard about it, and then I just kind of forgot about it. So I'm sorry. I don't think I can give you a very accurate answer. I, I really, really want to see it, though. Okay. Understandable. Yeah. Going back to Disney, what are some of your thoughts on, like, Disney CGI films not made by Pixar, like The Wild or Chicken Little? Um, well, like, uh, are you referring to the... Uh, I, I know you're talking about Chicken Little, and I haven't seen this The Wild thing, to be honest with you, but um, would you include in that line of questioning, like, The Incredibles and Cars and... and Toy Story 3, that sort of thing? Are, are those included in your question? Um, I, I, meant, I meant, like, uh, movies um, that are... Disney movies that are in CGI but aren't made by Pixar, you know, like Tangled. Oh, and that are not Chicken made Little. by Pixar. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, cause like, Chicken Little was okay. Yeah, like, I didn't... Yeah. I, I didn't love or hate Chicken Little, but uh, it's... It's something that, quite honestly, until you had brought it up, I hadn't remembered it existed since I saw it. It's just something that's not even very memorable. Or take, for example, um, all those Tinkerbell movies that uh, Walt Disney uh, uh. animation is doing these days. I, I just, they're completely not memorable to me. Uh, and unfortunately, I think it's best left up to the one section of Disney's animation, that being Pixar, who knows how to write a story and knows what they're doing. So it's just everything else just completely falls off my radar. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, um, Have you seen Tangled yet? Oh, Tangled, is that what you said before? Yeah, I actually saw Tangled, and I actually really liked Tangled, now that you mention it, uh, because there was something about it that uh, it made me think a lot about The Little Mermaid. It just had a lot of elements there, like, like there's this point in a boat where they're about to kiss and there's all these lights around them. I'm like, this looks an awful lot like I've seen out of The Little Mermaid. That and uh, our hero had hair that looked a lot like Eric's hair. And the only thing that made me kind of disappointed was that they were trying to go initially with this really awesome sort of watercolor thing with the way they were going to be rendering their, their movie, and then they decided to ditch that because it would have been too difficult or something. So uh, I was a little disappointed, but either way, regardless of how they rendered the movie, it was a good movie. And so uh, that I'll give them that one. That's the one that stands out among all the rest of their, their CG movies. Nice. Awesome. Uh, what's your opinion on some of the Don Bluth sequels? Besides Don Bluth sequels? Like, are we talking Land Before Time Don Bluth sequels? Or, Land uh, Before Time, Land Before Time, American Tale, Secret in Them 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Secret in Them 2. Secret in Them 2, no thank you. All the Land Before Time stuff, no thank you, especially because Don Bluth didn't actually work on them. Um, what was the other one you had just mentioned? Oh, there was, there was one American Tale. It was like Fievel Goes West. That yeah. one I was totally okay with. That one was all right. It, 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 it wasn't horrible, but then there was some other movie, and I can't remember the name of it at this point, and somebody's going to, again, yell at me for like, <laughs> you should know this. Um, but they're like, they're like under the city, and then they find, like, Native American mice, and then it's, like, a story of, of racism or something. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? That's, that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. That's enough of that. It's, I was, How about Bartok the Magnificent? That was, the one, that was one that he actually directed. Yeah, well, I'm Bartok sorry. He went crazy at that point because Bartok the Magnificent is awful. And that's <laughs> – poor Don. I love Don so much. I even actually like a troll in Central Park. I don't, I don't love a troll in Central Park, but I like it. But Bartok the Magnificent Man, no, no, I'm sorry. That and the sequel to All Dogs Go to Heaven, no, 
No. Uh, I, I saw that on TV right. a couple of days ago. It, it took me a wee while to realise it was Charlie Sheen that was actually doing uh, Charlie's voice. It was just kind of, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it's just dreadful. Um, and like American Tale 2, it's like that, I didn't realise until the end of last year that Jimmy Stewart was the voice of the dog. And I was like, oh, dear God. It's like the movie was okay, but it's yeah. just Jimmy Stewart. What the hell? So, that last exactly. Long. This is another one of those instances where I say, and here they go, putting Hollywood actors into voice acting roles, and it just kind of doesn't work. Yeah. Because you don't realize it at, um, when, when you're little. You just uh, um, think, oh, well, that's a that's a that's an odd voice. And then you grow up and think, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> what? Who who called him? <laughs> who called him and said, do you want to do this this animated movie? Well, he agreed to it, so maybe we should be mad at him, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are some anime that you considered overrated and underrated, in your opinion? Overrated? Uh, Hatalia? I, I don't know. I can't get into Hatalia. I sit there and I watch, and I watched a lot of them, okay, because they're only like five minutes apiece. And it just... I, I don't get it. It's it's just all over the place, and there's nothing actually historical about it, and it's just an excuse to pair cute guys together. Well, then why don't you just make a series about cute guys getting together? Um, so Hitalia, I personally feel, is overrated. Underrated? Let's see. You know, man, I wish I had some time to think about this a little bit more. Um... Right, give me a second here, maybe five more seconds before I decide to give up. Um, <laughs> We're timing you. <laughs> I'm like leaning back and looking at my shelf right now. Um, maybe it's not so much underrated, but maybe more so forgotten at this point. But uh, the series Kushigi Yugi, uh, nobody seems to remember. And it was like, I, I thought it was really important at one point, but now if you walk around an anime convention, I can guarantee you, like, 50% or more are not going to know what Fushigi Yugi is. And it was, like, one of the most important shoujo anime manga series that I can think of within the last 20 years. And, and now, like, nobody knows what it is. And that's really disappointing. So if any of you are out there and want to know more about Fushigi Yugi and the serious play, look it up. I promise you, it's good. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, are you familiar with the works of some of the other anime reviewers on, on the site, like uh, um, Donnie, Lana Pator, Y Ruler of Time? They all got their own unique ways of um, re reviewing anime. Have you checked them out at all? Yep, and they're all better than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. There's nobody better than Mars Girl. <laughs> But no, I, I love everybody else. Uh, I, I'm going to admit right here and right now, though, I have a hard time keeping up with most other reviewers of anything at this point anymore because it just got to a point where we got so many people that I just I got so overwhelmed and I don't know who to keep up with anymore. So if you ask me about anything within, like, let's say, the last one to two months, I'm probably going to get a little confused and, and such. So... So I'm sorry, I'm terrible. <laughs> That's, That's fine. That's okay. No problem. Uh, are there any videos you wish you could go back and redo? Like maybe you made some mistakes or errors you wanted to fix up? Oh, every single one of them. <laughs> every single video I do. Uh, four kids stuff, um, Disney stuff. Uh, Disney stuff had some things that I was, like, slightly off on, and I wish I had said it in a different way, um, because there were things that, like, say, for example, um, Darkwing Duck. Um, Darkwing Duck wasn't primarily animated by Disney Toon Studios. Um, in fact, most episodes were not, but it's not like the Australian studio never touched Darkwing Duck. 
So I kind of wish I had made that clear back then, but uh, a little bit late now, I guess. <laughs> okay. When I first heard the name Mars Girl, I, I always thought you were named after Marzipan from Homestar Runner. You know, the Homestar's <laughs> girlfriend. She looks like a baseball bat. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, have you seen Homestar Runner? Yeah, absolutely. I haven't kept up with it within, like, the past year, but when I was in high school up until, like, a year ago or so, I, I watched absolutely everything. I had seen every single animation, regardless of what subsection of the website it was. I love Homestar Runner. But no, that's not what my name is in reference to at all. It was Marvin from the Martian, yes? Yeah, it, it's a reference to Marvin the Martian, because it was like, at the time, when I was, when I was starting to get into the internet, and like, and, and start joining chat rooms and forums and stuff, I was really frustrated that I didn't know the gender of some people I was talking to, so I didn't know what was okay to say, what pronouns were okay to say. So I was like, all right, the girl part kind of important to me. Um, and then the Mars part was, yes, in reference to Marvin the Martian, because uh, back then, and it still stands now, he is indeed my favorite animated character. So there you go. Although um, I'm about to turn 24. So I'm thinking of dropping the girl part pretty soon. Uh, I don't know what I'd replace it with, or if I even would replace it with something. Mm -hmm. Mars chick? Mars what? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Mars lady. <laughs> something like that. Mars gal. <laughs> uh, that might work. <laughs> How about some questions by our good friend Detroit Mechworth? Yeah. yeah, how about Detroit that? Mechworth? Yeah, let's go yeah. with that. Yeah. Let's go with that. Uh, so Detroit's first question, uh, are you going to do any more comedy-only shows? And then it goes, please, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really don't know because I don't think I'm particularly funny. The internet for the most part, had told me that I'm not particularly funny, although then there's this small group of people who insist that I am. And I'm like, I don't know who to do this for, because most people are just going to get mad at me, and then I'm going to go back and watch it, and I'm not going to laugh at it. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I would have to test the waters really, really carefully. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't think I'm funny. Okay. Uh Detroit has this uh, weird running gag with his ex-wife, and, he, and he, uh, he asks, could you do me a favor and stop looking like my ex-wife? <laughs> I don't know if I can help you out there, bud. I, I really don't know. Sorry, man. What do you want me to do? Like, wear a mask? Wear a, or a wig? Or, or put on a mustache? Uh, then again, I mean, does your, your ex-wife have facial hair? I don't know. That could be bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, good. Uh, the next question he has is, uh, Texas, Jesus, I know you live in Austin, but still, how can you stand it? He had a I don't live in Austin. I live in San Antonio, but that's okay. It's like an hour's difference. Um, I don't really like Texas. I'm here because my family moved me here. And then it's a matter of cash to move me elsewhere, and now I'm kind of comfortable with my circle of friends. But otherwise, no, I really, I really don't like Texas, to be quite honest with you. Okay. <laughs> do, you do you find the trend towards ob obsession in anime fans disturbing? You know, like with all the dress-ups and all the uh, f fangirlism that, that, go that goes around? Well, okay, here's the thing. I like cosplay. Cosplay's been around forever. Cosplay is okay. It's the kind of activity that you see, like, at current generation anime conventions that I'm starting to like less and less. It didn't used to be as loud or as young as it is now. And um, the, the girls who go now, are uh, they, like, think it's okay to run up to a complete stranger, start shouting at them, and then basically tackle friendly assault one another without asking if it's okay first. 
Like, like I get it. We all like the same stuff, and that sort of stuff happens in anime, but people are still people who have to, like, live in this culture where it's not okay to start running up and yelling at people and tackle-hugging them and stuff. So, you know, you could at least ask, hey, is it okay if I run up and jump and hug you? And, and they don't do that. <laughs> it's that sort of thing that kind of bothers me. Mm, of course. Um, any plans for the new year? Plans? I, I don't know. Um, like, I, I know I'm going to MAGFest for one thing, uh, and that, of course, is coming up in, like, a week and a half. Uh, I don't know about uh, I don't know about any other conventions I'm going to. As far as New York. New York? New <laughs> York? Uh, <laughs> maybe. As far as videos are concerned, though, I was really thinking about that land before time thing, but I'm not 100% certain I'll do that. Um, I, I kind of just play it by ear and wait for the news to come to me. Uh, otherwise, no, I, I'm not really strictly scheduling anything. Hmm. All right. Uh, if you were picked as the nostalgia chick, what reviews would you have done immediately? I would have gone straight for uh, uh, Gem. Uh, the, the old television series, oh, Gem. I, I actually, um, I was thinking about that while I was doing the last Unicorn review as the uh, contest entry. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what if this, what if this like, actually works out? This could be a bad thing because I don't know if I have any other material. And, and then I ended up uh, getting contacted by someone who offered to send me DVD copies of Gem. And I acquired it from him. And I, I totally would have tackled that next. Um, and maybe I will still at some point. I don't know, but it's it's not really like I feel like the nostalgia chick title would have shoehorned me into this position where I had to talk about a certain kind of thing, and I felt more freed up when I didn't quite win that title, so I could kind of go off and do whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. But you know, I guess since now I can do whatever I want, uh, I could also do gem at some point. So. Depends on how many people ask me to actually do it. Maybe somebody listening will think, that's a good idea. You should do that. So yeah, exactly. If they do, then go ahead and tell me. <laughs> All right. You just these are some weird questions. Um, what's your opinion on Shiner Bach, which I guess is beer? Yeah, it's it's a it's a Texas it's a Texas thing. Um, I don't have an opinion because I'm going to be honest with you. I am the 25-year-old loser who has never had a drop of alcohol in my life, and I don't plan on having a drink. Hey, so there you go. go. No opinion. Stay sober. Drink, you drive, you lose. Exactly. <laughs> sober party, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, if you could do a crossover with any internet or real celebrity, who would it be and why? Crossover with any internet or real celebrity. Mm -hmm. I don't have a good answer for that because I totally never thought about that before. So I'm gonna say a real weird name like like Chris Chan, and then the guy who does. Oh, oh, oh. Chris Chan, get him away from me! <laughs> <laughs> so something like really, really bizarre, and then it would just. It would just be so bizarre that it would, like, be instantly meme-worthy. It, it would just be so weird, and it would spread across the Internet like wildfire. I have no idea what we would do, because that poor guy, God bless that guy, but really, all over the Internet with all of your oddities, really, man, that, mm -hmm. that guy, <laughs> just, just wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is this. Uh, let's see. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this next uh, question. I've gotten, I've, I've gotten bad memories out of that guy. Let me tell you. <laughs> Nerf or nothing. <laughs> Nerf or nothing for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, I need to do a uh, a Nerf war again sometime soon. I have a large group of friends that I occasionally do Nerf battles with. And we use my armory of Nerf weapons to do it. And uh, it's good weather right now. I should probably be out there shooting people up with Nerf darts. 
week. <laughs> uh, oh, God, not this one. Uh, <laughs> Enjoy. This, all right. Do you believe in life after love? I don't know, because I can feel something inside me say, I really don't think you're strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, he actually got the, the bad share joke he was going with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, bad share joke. Never mind. And yes, I listen to share. <laughs> you have a problem with that? <laughs> <laughs> Go with Detroit. <laughs> right. uh, God bless him. All right, these uh, next questions are by the our one and only Susie. <clears throat> Figured out. Uh, right, uh, now my first question. Uh, I'm a big animation fan myself, like you, and I have to say I love both the modern day CGI animation and uh, original hand drawn animation like Snow White, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, do you prefer hand drawn animation to CGI, and if so, what makes it stand out more for you? I, I like hand drawn animation better these days, I mean, CGI certainly has its place, and it can be done really, really well in the case of, like, for example, certain Pixar movies. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with current generation CGI is that it's overused, it's abused, it, any, any jerk team of, like, five people and a couple of computers can just kind of crap out some talking animal TV series in a matter of a few days. So it doesn't really take a whole lot of effort. But when you're hand drawing something, you're sitting there thinking, no, this has to be good. You're like staring at it for an intensely long amount of time. And you're thinking, yeah. this had better come out good or else I'm going to be really upset with myself. So I think companies that these days go the extra mile and actually try to hand draw something, uh, are the ones that it just shows that they really still care about the material they're making. Uh, but that's not to say that CG doesn't have its place or anything. It's just that, again, it's definitely overused now. Uh, exactly. It's especially when, because I'm a, I'm a huge Pixar fan, um, mm -hmm. and if you compare things like Up to, for example, one of the, the dream or the Sony uh, Open Season 2, for example, is that you can see so much mm. difference between them. Like Up is just a, in my opinion, a, a work of art. I think it's absolutely beautiful mm. and it's uh, gorgeous and everything. And you can compare that with the original uh, Disney movies that opened up, I think. I just absolutely think it's stunning. Right, exactly. And it's stuff like, I'm, I'm going to say it's mostly DreamWorks stuff that I tend to avoid. I, mm. like, try and avoid... Um, Things like Madagascar or Ice Age, uh, mostly stuff past the first Ice Age. I mean, the first Ice Age is kind of cute, but um, yeah. it, it's CG talking animals, and it's usually DreamWorks that's pumping that sort of stuff out, and uh, they're the ones that I'm just not interested in. I'm with you there, girl. <laughs> <laughs> What's your all-time favorite Marvin the Martian moment? Oh, all-time favorite Marvin the Martian moment. Um, it's got to be um, one of two things, uh, and they're both animated shorts he was in, either Mad as a Mars Hare or the original Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century animated short. Oh, that's um, classic. Cause, like, that's Mad as a Mars Hare gave, gave us the classic lines like, where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering <laughs> kaboom. And then um, Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century was like this genius parody of old Buck Rogers comics and such. And then I even think it spun off really well into what eventually became this really underrated TV series on Cartoon Network. I just loved I absolutely loved the TV series, and uh, I, I don't think enough people watched it. So, yeah, either Duck Dark uh, or Man of Mars Hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, thought was, I, thought, I thought it was funny, but kind of kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Like, e even more weird compared to, like, say, all the other Looney Tunes stuff. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, 
I just absolutely love Marvin. I just one of the lines that stuck with me. I've been seeing this since I was about six or something, and it's it's in the Duck Dodgers episode that he says, "I claim this planet in the name of Mars." Isn't that lovely? I've been saying that for <laughs> years, and that's that's just I think it's classic moment for me as well. From that from that same animated short, I, I love that Duck Dodgers. You know, Daffy. He he can come out and he gifts Marvin with what is quite obviously a lit bomb, a lit explosive, and he puts it in his hand, and Marvin's just kind of dense, and he looks at it, even though it's hissing there in his hand, and he goes, oh, thank you, boom! <laughs> <laughs> like he's, he's so happy to have received this gift. And actually, no, it wasn't Zappy who handed it to him. It was Porky as the eager young space cadet uh, giving it to him, saying, here you are, you sing from another world, you, and it, it, it's that little series of events that it just cracks me up every time. Oh, it's genius. You have made him very angry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a poster with Marvin the Martian uh, on my wall right above my computer that says that line, actually, so yeah. <laughs> That's a classic. Oh, it's... I would just bet hours quoting Marvin the Martian. Uh... It's awesome, though, so we don't mind. Yeah, that's really awesome. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, do you know if you're going to be taking part in the third anniversary for Channel Awesome? I am pretty positive that I am. Uh, I've been involved in some chat sessions that uh, have stated, all right, don't tell anybody about this who's outside of the third year anniversary, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to assume that I was supposed to be reading what I was reading. So, so, yeah, I'm pretty positive if I'm in on it. So would you like a bigger role in the third anniversary? It'd be nice, but, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not one of the major cash cows of the site, I guess you could say. Maybe that's kind of a poor way of phrasing it. But, you know, I'm not one of the big stars. I'm not what everybody really comes here for. So I'm totally okay taking a back seat to the larger roles. Um, and I also don't think I'm all that great of an actor. So if I just get some really fun moments, then that's all I care about is just having fun and, and, and having one moment where I can say, yeah, that thing I did was kind of funny. Just like <laughs> one moment, I can be good with that. One thing I have to say about Kickassia, and you, usually I'm, I'm, always, I'm always seeing... Um, Oh, I'm always seeing those scenes with you and Linkara, and I'm sure a lot of people started getting ideas about it, like maybe the Linkara and Mars Girl characters could actually be a couple. And yeah, that's been uh, happening for like a year and a half. Like even before kick yeah, people were doing that, and I'm pretty sure that was written in there to kind of play up what people already thought. <laughs> then Iron Liz came along. Yeah, I she, thought it would be pretty she funny. really uh, she ruined that thing pretty quickly, which I, I'm okay with. That they are the actual couple going on there, so that's fine yeah. with me. I thought it'd be funny if like there, there was maybe a rivalry between the two characters, but no, nah, that that would just be like um, maybe Not as far as I've heard of, but maybe that can be written in somewhere. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have to say, uh, Mars Girl, I love your series, Mars Girl Sings, especially the Mega Man 2 episodes, because I'm like, totally addicted to that game at the moment on the Wii. Uh, can we expect to see some more of this show in the future? I'd really do this? like to. Uh, if, you, if you are going to do more episodes, could you possibly do Crash Bandicoot? Because I absolutely find that Crash theme addicting. <laughs> the, the only thing is that, like... People, for some reason, compare me to Brental Floss from Screw Attack, despite the fact that video game remixes and uh, remakes of video game music have like, been around for years and years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And like, when, I did, when I did Mega Man 2 and oh, what was another one I did? Um, you did Duck Tales. No, I think it was pretty much from... Yeah. DuckTales, yeah, was the, was the other one. Those were two things that 
Well, he didn't do that version of the Mega Man 2. So, excuse me, it was really just a DuckTales thing. When I did DuckTales, it was like, everyone's like, you're trying to be Brendel Floss. And I'm like, excuse me? I'm not doing anything like Brendel Floss. So that kind of kept me from doing it for a little while. But I, I really like doing it because it's fun. I don't do it because I think I'm great at singing or anything. I don't think I, I don't do it because I think it sounds particularly amazing. I just really think it's really fun to do. So yeah, I really would like to do it. I know that Brendel Floss has done a, a Crash Bandicoot track, and I would want to avoid doing that one if I were to do something from Crash Bandicoot. But definitely, I'll, I'll see if there's any other tracks from Crash Bandicoot that I could do and um, won't look like I'm trying to be Brendel Floss. Exactly. It's, no, I absolutely love it. It's I think because I watched that episode quite a few times it actually got me into thinking I need to go and play Mega Man 2 again because the theme is just awesome <laughs> and I'm, I'm playing it now, Mega Man 2 had what, what was quite honestly very arguably the best music in the entirety of the Mega Man series so it's like awesome. a no brainer to do Mega Man 2 music exactly that's that was just one of my favourite games as a kid and it's the, my, my favourite now at the moment 20 mm -hmm. years later after I started playing it it's amazing it's arguably one of the best Mega Man platformers, too. Aside from its music, it just played really well. It's like they got the formula just perfect right about there. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree with you more. I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but i got to leave uh, in a few minutes for work, so I'm just going to ask one more question before I go. Sure. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to skip ahead. You, got, you can come back up to this. Um, what were some of your favorite shows you used to watch as a kid, and what made them stand out for you? Well, let's see. Well, I can say one of them was Darkwing Duck, for one. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess because it was a parody. It was like a blatant parody of Batman. It's like this really incompetent Batman with some really witty lines every so often. Um, and I guess on that note, I really liked Batman the Animated Series and Batman and Robin. Um, and then Superman would come up after that on TV, and I don't know, I liked Batman a lot more than I liked Superman, and I can't really say why that was. Um, that, I really had an ear for, for musical themes, and it tickled me to no end that they used the same music in the Batman animated series as they had in um, the, the Tim Burton uh, Batman movies. So it, it just... It thrilled me. Um, so those were two of them. Mm -hmm. um, and what kid didn't at the time like a lot of the Warner Brothers animated stuff, like Animaniacs, Tiny Toons. It was like the stuff yeah. Steven Spielberg was on. There was stuff that at the time totally went over my head. And then I can go back and watch them now, and I feel just as giddy about it, but for entirely new reasons, plus the old reasons. So, so those were good on like all levels, and then I don't know. I didn't have, I didn't have much TV when I was a kid that wasn't local television broadcasting, aside from um, the WB and Fox. So I didn't have like Cartoon Network back in the day. Um, I had very little Nickelodeon. Um, That's a shame. Yeah, I, mean, I, remember, I, I I love the, the game shows on it, like Guts and Legends of the Hidden Temple. Those were all. Awesome. I did get plenty of chances to see those, either from, from somebody else's house, or there would be times when our cable company would provide us with, like, a full week of Nickelodeon for free, and I'd just sit there and watch. I, Guts was probably my favorite. In fact, uh, Guts did this nationwide tour, and they came to San Antonio, Texas, and my mom was, I love my mom. She. She totally didn't want to be there, but she took me to the, the Nickelodeon Guts tour, and I really wow. wanted to be kicked out of the audience because they they brought out the aggro crag, and I was like, uh, oh my god, I don't want to climb that thing. And I, it's okay. I, I always wanted to go on that show. They brought it back, but it was crap. Like they they yeah, completely crag and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I I gotta go go now, so because I got work and I got other. Um, things I need to get to, but it, it was it was an honor to talk to you, Kaylin. Yeah, you bet. This has been fun. And I hope and I hope uh, that I get to uh, become a part of the site and maybe do a crossover with you. Who knows? 
So yeah, well, whatever. If, if you want to do anything, I mean, just hit me up. So I'd be more than happy to at least talk with you some more. Hey, that that that's nice. And this is the hardcore kid signing out. See you guys later. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Bye. Uh, what is your all-time favorite video game? Chrono Trigger. Without a doubt, it's Chrono Trigger. I own two copies of it um, and beaten, I think, all the endings. Pretty sure, if not almost all the endings. That's one of the few games I can say I would happily play over and over again, even though I've already beaten it to hell and back. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's your most hated game of all time? Most hated of all time. Shoot, it's it's real hard to say of all time because I I'll I'll come across something new that I really don't like and I'll really hate it for a really, really long time until something else comes along. So currently the game I hate the most is Final Fantasy thirteen. And I was thinking about doing some sort of review of that at some point. And just based on story and characters alone. Of course, the gameplay I really completely dislike as well, but but, but really, it, it was like world's biggest disappointment as far as the Final Fantasy franchise goes. Even bigger than the Final Fantasy X-2 for me. I'm yeah. sorry, that game, I I can't I can't hardly play a few hours of it before getting really, really miserable. Yeah, it's, I just, I've just never been able to get into those into those games. I'm old-fashioned. I just go with the, the old-fashioned platform games like Super Mario Brothers and Sonic the Hedgehog and think I'm just mm -hmm. addicted to those. It's, it's, just... it's hard to screw up a platformer, although I guess Sonic Team has managed to do that a number of times. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but a, a traditional RPG where they're like, no, it's got to change all the time now. We can't stick with the traditional JRPG style. Why don't we go with something completely different? And, and then they didn't think about whether it actually worked or not. No. <laughs> it would have it been better had they just gone with something more traditional, and I think people would have eaten it up just as fast. And maybe I actually would have not hated it. So, I don't know. Some people are going to hate me for saying that. Because I actually don't like a Final Fantasy. Oh no! But, oh well. <laughs> just oh have well. to just have to deal with it. <laughs> it happens. Move on. <laughs> uh, the next question is: What's your personal favorite contributor of uh, that guy with the glasses to watch? Who are you watching? Man, it's a broad question. Most recently, I think I've been watching the most of Ben's guy. So, yeah. So, uh, I'll say him for right now, but man, it's kind of mean asking me to pick who my favorite <laughs> to go, to go contributor is. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good people on that site, so it's hard to choose one favorite person. Exactly. And uh, which of your videos would you say you're the most proud of? Uh, maybe this one particular anime news uh, editorial where I decided, you know what, the news just kind of sucks right now, and instead I decided to go for a nerf battle, <laughs> and it. Yeah. So I like briefly said, hey, there's there's like this TV station, and they're gonna show anime. Hey, let's shoot each other up. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to do with the news, but uh, I found this nice magical loophole that kind of tied it in there and let the rest of it be a nerf fight with Matrix music going on. And uh, I'd say that was about the most cinematic I've ever gotten, and it was just really short. But I'd like to expand on that at some point, uh, and hopefully without me being an actor in it, because I hate acting because I suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, who would you say are your biggest influence in the world of comedy and animation? Biggest influences? Probably Warner Brothers. I'd say I'm pretty similar to, like, Doug in that aspect, because I know 
he's got this big Daffy Duck sort of influence on him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and uh, so Warner Brothers and, uh, like I had mentioned before, the Steven Spielberg touched uh, afternoon animations from the early mid-90s. Mm -hmm. um, that is the kind of stuff that it's like, hey, not only can a kid watch it, but their parent could also watch it with them and be laughing for an entirely different reason. So, yeah, I'd say Warner Brothers. And really, he worked with Warner Brothers. So that's like, I'd say Warner Brothers is like my animation heroes. Uh, Disney is all right, but they're just not the kind of slapstick funny that Warner Brothers has been for decades upon decades. Uh, that's, I find that as well. Just any Looney Tunes cartoon that, that comes on the TV, I just find myself giggling hysterically at, like, uh, anything Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. Um, exactly. And Pinky and the Brain, Animaniacs, Freakazoid, just, they're mm -hmm. just all hysterical. Even now when you watch them and you watch them, like, what, 10, 15 years ago and they're back on you and just think, this is hysterical. Mm -hmm. They're just absolutely genius. I, I, I like Warner Brothers, but... I'm heavily uh, Donald Duck oriented, so I used to watch Donald Duck cartoons all the time on Disney. Donald Duck was pretty good out of Disney's animated shorts, I'll admit. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is that I can do a spot-on impression of Donald Duck. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me let me give you a sample of what it sounds. All right. Like. Uh, <clears throat> I love my <laughs> That's awesome. I know. That's, that's what, the only thing I could do is really awesome. Uh, it's like, we get this every week, Kaylin. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so I do it every you week. You've got to impress everybody with it, huh? Yeah, yeah. I just like, hey, hey, see what I can do. Laugh <laughs> your ass off. <laughs> oh, it is really good. Yeah, that's a cool impression I can do. Uh, all right, the next question would be, is there any reviewer on that guy with the glasses that you're dying to do a crossover review with? Hmm. Well, I can tell you that there's two whom I have scheduled crossovers with that I'm really excited about. And uh, I guess that's kind of close to dying to do a review with. But I don't necessarily want to give that away because, you know, they're kind of confirmed between us, so so you know they're coming, and you'll find out when they come out. Awesome. But, but yes, I'm very excited about a couple of these. All right, we'll be looking forward to those crossovers. We will. Um, I've just got a couple of more, couple more questions. Um, it's, All right. It's back to animation. Now, I was amazed and very pleased to hear that uh, from your top 10 animated shows that tell the whole story in their theme episodes that you loved uh, both Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when you were a kid, as did I. Uh, yes. Now, do you think it's fair to say that the animation studios in the 80s, early 90s were possibly a little bit sexist, thinking that all girls would love My Little Pony and Care Bears? A little bit, yeah, because like the, the, the animation studio who did Transformers and G.I. Joe was also the same animation studio who did Jim. So, hmm, stark <laughs> difference between these two kinds of shows. So the same studio is like, all right, we need a specifically boys set of cartoons and a specifically set of girls cartoons <laughs> and keep them as far away from each other as humanly possible. So, yeah, it was pretty obvious. And there's like a total of one, maybe two female Transformers um, mm -hmm. One of which didn't make an appearance until the 1986 uh, animated Transformers movie, and y yeah, that's definitely a, a guy's medium. Yeah, it's a, I just felt it with uh, with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, especially they had a more in-depth story into them than if you f if you switched over the TV station to a My Little Pony episode, it'd be like, oh, I'm going to brush my hair today. No, no yeah, this exactly. It's, it's like they've uh, animated My Little Pony to be a far more shallow sort of sort of series than the super action-packed boys shows. Like, why couldn't My Little Pony go on this ongoing storyline adventure to find the secret of, 
whatever it was that kept ruining their daily lives. I don't even know anymore. All I know is that there was some movie with some smooths, and that was about as in-depth as it ever got. Oh, I remember that movie. I think I, sw- I remember it from when I was about five or something, and I just think, I just want to watch Transformers or He-Man. They're more interesting. Exactly. <laughs> There's this ongoing crisis in those shows. There's no ongoing crisis in My Little Pony. It's like, oh no, someone is trying to make our castle not so happy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't care. I really don't care. (laughs) Just blow something up. Make it interesting. (laughs) And uh, I'm also a huge Disney fan. And uh, Mm -hmm. like you said in the Disney Toon Studios episodes, uh, I love a goofy movie and DuckTales the movie. Uh, is there any other of these types of Disney movie that you absolutely adore? Um, let's see. Now, are you talking like out of Disney Toon Studios, or are basically just anything that um, wasn't necessarily animated as part of the Disney classics? Yeah, be- uh, basically anything outside of the the normal classes like Sleeping Beauty, etc. Um, because I don't know. It's basically Disney Tunes. It did a whole bunch of the work. But, you, you know, I mentioned in that one review um, about Winnie the Pooh's Grand Adventure, Most Grand Adventure. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I absolutely adore that movie. I think that is a great, great movie because it, it just has these moments where you're like, Christopher Robin's not going to disappear, is he? These characters that we know and love, are, they're getting sad. I don't like that they're sad. And then in the end, everything's okay, and you realize nobody has any reason to be sad. And it's like, wow, this is a really nice movie. <laughs> it is, it's, it, you don't, especially now, like if you sit and watch a Winnie the Pooh movie, you think, I shouldn't like this. I'm in my 20s. I shouldn't like this. But yeah. you find yourself <laughs> running and think, this is so good. Well, it's kind of like, um, I don't know how many of you have watched Toy Story 3. Oh, but right. Toy Story 3, <laughs> I, I went into it initially thinking, uh, it's about the, the, the kid, he's going off to college. I don't know if I'm going to like this. And then by the end of it, I completely changed my tune because I was like, I'm an adult and these are toys, but I'm like legitimately sad. It, it kind of brings back this memory of childhood, and you're growing up, and you have to let these sort of things go, but these things were there for you, like, the whole time. Yeah. And it, it, it's a tearjerker, and Winnie the Pooh kind of is similar, because you realize that Pooh and Tigger and all the other characters are actually all toys that belong to Christopher Robin, and Christopher Robin is grown up a little bit. He's he's starting to go to school now for the first time in that movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he's not going to be there nearly as often. And so it's it's kind of the same story. It's legitimately almost equally as sad. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, I, I have to agree with you with Toy Story. I, anybody that knows me will know that I'm absolutely addicted to the Toy Story trilogy. And I just mm-hmm. think they're absolutely kick-ass. is an awful good series of movies. I didn't think the third one was going to be as good as it was, and it just blew me out of the water. Oh, I, did. I was sitting in buckets of tears <laughs> at the end of it. <laughs> no, don't, no. Especially when the end came, I was like, oh, no, no more. <laughs> no, I, I went with, like, four other friends, and we were all, like, a row of fully grown adults in tears. It was so pathetic, but... I mean, come on, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, exactly. No, no, you're crying for a good reason. Exactly. Because I you have a just, heart. <laughs> yeah, you got a heart. I, I, I seen it in the theaters with a bunch of kids, and they were just one shut up for no goddamn reason. I was like, shut up, oh. try to watch the movie. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> miserable. Nice. Yeah, I, even brought, I even brought my uh, uh, then four-year-old niece with, and she's like, is the movie over? Is the movie over? And I'm like, aww. Nice. Yeah, she, she, she hasn't seen the other two, so she wouldn't know what was going on to begin with. Oh, God, just Toy Story is a classic. Yeah, I know, it's a true classic to the max. Uh, 
I have I, I was thinking of a question off the top of my head right now before I go into my questions is uh what's your opinion on tailspin? Tailspin's all right. I don't hate it. It it's it's not my favorite thing, but man, that intro is like the catchiest one out of almost any of the Disney afternoon you know, animated series. Yeah, I mean, I how can you how can you possibly get out of your head? Oh yeah, you can't get out of your head. I know, it's right up there with the, with the DuckTales theme. It's right next to it. Like DuckTales, woo! <laughs> and it's good because it's like it's not telling you too much about the series, and yet it tells you exactly what you need to know. Tail spin. It's all you need to know, and the rest of the song is just plain good. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. And, and one of my favorite characters in that uh, show is, guaranteed, Kit, Kit Cloud Kicker. Mm-hmm. That's just like an awesome name altogether. Cause Cloud- exactly. <laughs> and, and when I first watched the series, I'm like, Kit? That reminds me of another show, of Knight, Knight Rider with Kit. And I was like, is that Knight the- Rider, right? <laughs> so I was like, okay, that's weird. Uh, besides that, uh, here's a question that, that I always wanted to know. Why did you dye your hair blue? Because for years, I wasn't allowed to. And then I had this job that, um, uh, I used to do, um, uh, technical support over the phone. And I didn't actually have to see my customers. And people were coming in with crazy hair colors and hairstyles all the time. Because, you know, we don't see customers. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? Blue. Just just to be radical and different, because I've never been able to do it before. Blue. And then <laughs> it, it happened, it just so happened that, like, that very same week that I scheduled the appointment, that's when Doug put out the uh, video looking for the nostalgia chick. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to have blue hair for this review. <laughs> and then they picked me up, and I'm like, people only know me with blue hair. Now I have to keep it, and so I've had it for like over two years. Now I'm finally <laughs> going to be getting rid of it, and uh, it, it's about time. I'm done with the blue now. I, it's yeah. had its run. It's done. <laughs> move on. <laughs> um, any future cons you plan on going to? Well, there was Magfest for one. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another one that. I don't even know what year it's going to happen, okay? It might not happen until 2012 or 2013, but I want to go to a Star Wars celebration, and they only happen once every couple of years. Oh. And one happened just this past year in 2010, and uh, I just, I'm kicking myself because I missed it. And it used to be that they didn't allow video cameras in there, so I was like, huh, I don't want to go. And then I find out after the fact that this year they actually did, so I'm like, Darn it! Why didn't I go? <laughs> whenever the next one comes up is, is when I'm going to be going to that. Um, I am going to Acon. I did already purchase a badge for Acon. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I'm a guest at any other conventions. I got asked if I wanted to be a guest at a couple, but I'm not going to say anything until they either confirm or deny. Yeah. So those are at least my official plans. And uh, I was thinking about one of the comic cats, uh, one of the comic markets in Japan this year, but I don't know if I'm going to be financially able to do that or not. It, it, it all depends. That one's up in the air. Right. What was your favorite con that you went to? Um, like last year or uh, ever? Ever. Just ever. Ever. Uh, Because we all know really hard. It's, it, it's hard to say which convention was the best because they can be the best for different reasons. Yeah. If, it's for, if it's for reasons like I did something totally awesome with my friend that had like no relation to how the convention was set up, then I'm going to say that that was just this past weekend at IkiCon because I went with one of my best friends, and we did some really awesome stuff while we were there, but it had nothing to do with the way the convention was organized in any way, shape, or form. Or um, do we say it's uh, if, if we're going by the way a convention was organized? I'd say 
the London MCM Expo had probably the best organization I've ever seen. Although I don't know if that counts as a con because it's an expo. Yeah. Um, but um, the Screw Attack Gaming Convention, that falls under the, um, the atmosphere of the people who are there um, and not necessarily the programming. The programming's okay. Um, some dangerous things happen there. Things don't always happen exactly on time or as according to plan, but it, the stuff that is mostly scheduled there and the people who go there are just really, really awesome. That is probably the best atmosphere of people I've ever been to for the last two years. So um, I say go to a con that has a good atmosphere of people before going to a con because you want the con to fulfill something for you because these days... I don't think conventions are really doing that very well. Yeah, because uh, a couple of months ago I went to my first ever con, and it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. and the people, I think, are really what make the convention, rather than the convention making the convention. Yeah, yeah. That was, and uh, th that con I went to was called Daisho Con in, uh, in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and uh, Doug and... Lewis were there as guests, so I met Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm mildly familiar with Daisho Con. I'm familiar with quite a number of conventions around the U.S., and I've wanted to go to a ton of them and never had the opportunity to do so. Yeah, that, that, actually, you know, I was think I was like, who should be the next guest of Daisho Con? I was like, maybe Mars Grill could travel up to Wisconsin. That'd be great. I would totally go there. If somebody decided I was important enough to invite, I would be there in a heartbeat. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that'd be cool. Uh, so somebody pitch that idea to them, that would be totally great. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking, so I'll do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, where am I? Oh, my, okay. What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, mostly video game soundtracks, as well as Eurobeat. So stuff from, like, um, Initial D and the Para Para Paradise games, um, and then it just kind of evolved from there. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that AVEX, the people who license, uh, license that particular kind of music, I, I buy a bunch of their their compilations of Eurobeat. So Eurobeat is just loud and fast and electronic and kind of goofy because the lyrics don't really make any sense. So I, I love it. It's just so cheesy. Um, just while talking about the Eurobeat music, uh, Carlin, have you ever heard of a, a competition, uh, Eurovision, that takes place um, every year around May in uh, Europe and the UK? It, you can probably catch it on YouTube or something because it's got all the, that kind of uh, that music that you, you'd be into. It's all crazy, stupid lyrics and, and everything. I was just wondering if you've ever heard of it heard of it, yes, but otherwise I, I honestly don't know all that much about it. Now i got to look into it for sure. Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's it's a tribute in my family. I've been watching this since I was about 10 or something. You just put it on and then you get like the Ukraine coming on to sing a random song about chickens and then <laughs> <laughs> going to another a country. It's, it's pure comedy gold. Yeah, exactly. That's why I love Eurobeat so much, because it just doesn't make sense. There's stuff like, my sweet banana, and like, <laughs> like really, these are the lyrics? And, and yeah, those are the lyrics. That's why it's awesome. It's just, it's so cheesy, but hysterical at the same time, so you need, mm -hmm. you need to check it out. <laughs> Absolutely, I'll be doing that for sure. <laughs> and uh, what bands or musicians do you listen to? Well, among Eurobeat, there's Dave Rogers. He's probably my favorite Eurobeat musician. Um, other than that, I don't follow too many bands, like popular pop culture bands. Yeah. I do really like, uh, as a composer, uh, Nobuo Uematsu, whom I'm sure everyone and their mom knows of from the Final Fantasy series. Um, and, of course, he's done other games along with the guy who made Final Fantasy, who went off and started his own company, uh, so he did stuff like Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey. Uh, he did one of the Ah My Goddess movies soundtracks, so he has a pretty long list of credentials of stuff he's done, and I just, I, I love his compositions. Awesome. Sweet. 
Uh, what would you say is your favorite song that you listen to all the time? Hmm. Don't Stop Me Now by, uh, by Queen. Oh, good choice. Sweet. Because it's, uh, it's just something that, that shouts that I'm having fun, I'm having a good time, it's just really positive and really happy, and I, I can just run around and, and shout that at the top of my lungs. That is a great song. That's uh, one of the classics. Mm-hmm. I used to say uh, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen was my favorite yeah. song. That was about 10 years ago or something, that, but Queen are just amazing. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, would you, have you ever thought about reviewing music, like anime music related, or maybe soundtracks? I haven't really given that much thought, because uh, despite the fact that I do have some musical background, um, I don't know how people would take to that, because, uh, I don't know, I I guess I don't really seem like the, the musical sort of person that everyone should be going to. I mean, it's... I guess it's kind of pause territory to an extent. Yeah. Um, but I, I did take, like, I took piano lessons for 10 years, and I went into competitions. I went to statewide competitions and came out pretty well. Um, I was in, like, three different honor choirs at once while I was in high school. And uh-huh. it's like everybody really expected me to do classical sort of stuff. And then I got really bored with it, and I just like dropped all, all music all together all at once, just about. Um, and the only thing I keep up with now is like rhythm games, and then some music in video games and in animation. And I just kind of am into it casually. I'm sure I could throw myself in there and, and have something intelligent to say after kind of studying it just a little while longer. I don't know. I don't, I don't think many people would really care about what I have to say about music. Okay, I was just... No, that's kind of interesting. Because, you know, there's other... Because I mean, I'm, I'm a music critic, I'll tell you. I, I have a series that I'm starting out is... Uh, I'm reviewing music videos. Mm-hmm. And there's not a lot of word from any music critics anywhere. It's just all movies, TVs, anime, games, and that's pretty much it. So I uh-huh. just... So I, I was just wondering if anybody would just branch out to music reviews in any shape or form. You know what? I think you should just dive into that because, you know, it's not particularly um, well-reviewed just yet. Everyone else is pretty much already got everything covered, and then there's 80 bajillion people who do cover the same things, and music isn't exactly really fully covered yet. So by all means, get in there and do oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm going into, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, You're diving in there. Um, so our very last question for you, uh, Morris Girl. What do you think of live-action adaptions of cartoons, like, for example, Scooby-Doo and Yogi Bear? <laughs> no, 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 please, no, like, like, take, for example, um, Chipmunks, okay, when I, when I watched Chipmunks animated series, it, which have been around forever, like, I thought they had the formula down okay, they weren't, like, real Chipmunks, they were these deformed kids who had kind of pinched up chip, chipmunk kind of faces. <laughs> and then you get to this this half live action, half CG thing, and then they're actual chipmunks, like tiny, tiny little rodents that stand on the arms of couches because they're that small. And then they're like really rude and they're really kind of grotesque and they sing really stupid songs that, that I don't like. Of course, they've always been doing that, but that's beside the point. The point is, they're awful. They're just awful and offensive, and I don't like them. I don't like them at all. <laughs> yeah, I do agree with you, Dag. Ellen the Chimlings has been one of my favorite things growing up, and when I saw it, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> And now they think that this is a great idea for some reason. Oh, oh, and that's another thing. Apparently.
apparently there's gonna be some some Marvin the Martian movie too. Oh yeah, I've heard, heard this from a couple of different sources, and it's gonna be who like Mike Myers um, doing the voice oh. of Marvin, and that sounds awful. That sounds atrocious. That makes me really angry just thinking about it. I don't even need to see screenshots of it. I don't even need to see a trailer. I no. am mad. I am really, really unhappy. <laughs> That's it. Why can't they just leave the classics alone? I don't know. Why can't they just, if they want to make a movie so bad, just, just animate it and, like, leave it at that because that's what you've been doing for so long. Warner Brothers, just, just animate another animated movie because that's what you're good at. Exactly. Do what you're good at. Don't try and put it into some new medium to try and tell the story. You're not good at it. I'm telling you this <laughs> right now. You suck. <laughs> you suck it. Brilliant. That was a rant by Mars Girl. <laughs> uh, I feel better now. <laughs> uh, do you have any last last minute questions, Susie? Um no, I think I'm I'm all up to date. I'm all good. Uh, so, yeah, I think that we are over with this interview. Oh, okay, dokie. Uh, this is Mike, and along with me was Susie. Woo! Uh, this has been Attack of the Awesome Interviews. Uh, have an awesome day, and we'll see you in the next episode. See you later! <laughs>
sort of got everything planned out. I just need to introduce ourselves. I'll introduce you, and we'll uh, go with the questions, which is pretty straightforward. All right. Great. All right. Let me uh, <clears throat> give myself. <clears throat> <clears throat> You coughed up a lung yet, Mike? Almost. <laughs> cool. Really? You're, uh... <laughs> Is there, I think, your question's next? No. Uh, nah, I think it's your question. Or no, it's yeah. Mike. <laughs> no, you do. Mike, sorry. Right, no, it's mine. Uh, there you go. An anime based on RoboCop and yeah, sorry. <laughs> would an anime based on oh, oh boy. <laughs> sorry, we're just. I got, I, I think the, sorry, <clears throat> confused there. I can just imagine that. Why do you fool the anime world? <laughs> <laughs> Very strange. Uh. Uh, would you? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, know, I, know, I know the bait. Yeah. Or, or, no, finish your sentence. What's that? <laughs> Can I answer my question? Because I actually have to leave you soon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's, let's do that now. Yeah, let's do that now. Let's just go straight into it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, oh, boy, am I nervous. <laughs> going, going back to Disney, what are some of... Hey, hey, no laughing at me. Sorry. I, I don't like being laughed at. You're okay. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> there you um, go. <coughs> excuse what's me. What's your all-time favorite... Uh, hold on just a sec, guys. You guys continue without me. i got to do something really quick. So just go without me. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. See you later. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Do what now? I'm sorry. I'll let you finish the question. Sorry. All right. I'm back. So where are hey, you guys at? Uh, we you skipped down to question 10 in my thing. Let me see. So I was just talking to Kaylin about the uh, Mars Girl Sings episode, uh, series and... Then you did that, so I'll take over from Brandon's next question, which would have been... <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to do a shameless plug here and say that I created a website for music reviewers and music lovers to talk about music. It's called Shattered Record. It's, 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 it's brand new, and I think it's got to be pretty awesome when it's all ready to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Actually, I did hear that same source about um, the Marvin Martian movie, but I heard another source saying that Mike Myers would do the voice of Pepe Le Pew for a movie. Oh, God. Based Pepe Le Pew. Oh, God. So like, okay, then I don't know who to believe anymore. <laughs> but there is going to be a Marvin the Martian movie, but they don't know what's going to happen. It's all in works. But all I know is Mike Myers is voicing uh, Pepe Le Pew in the future movie. I was like... What? Oh dear God! That, well, that sounds equally stupid. So, yeah. um, same thing, same rant, except applied to Pepe Le Pew. Same thing. <laughs> uh, it just needs uh, to be dragged into the street and shot before it's done. <laughs> just kill it. Kill the idea. There. That was awesome, Kaylin. Awesome. Thanks very much. Yeah, you bet. Thanks a lot. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that's our word. That's our word of the week at the moment. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. 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 Uh, yeah, I'll uh, try to get this interview up in the next couple of days or so. Okay. And I'll I'll I'll, I'll pop a link to you when it's done. Awesome. If you're going to tweet it or something, I'll totally retweet it for you. Oh, fuck oh, yeah. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so... So... Uh, thanks very much for answering all our 
Uh, questions, Kaylin? Yeah, you bet. And well, admittedly, I got a video that's due later today, so I got to finish that. Yeah, I'll we'll let you go. Okay, but thanks a lot, and let me know when that link is up. And uh, take care, you guys. Yep, and you take care. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I think it was a little long, just like the Doug interview. Well, we did uh, go off on one a little bit, but it was worth it because that was yeah, really, really answers and everything. It was brilliant. It was good.